Hello and welcome to the News 9 Plus show on the world's first news and current affairs OTT platform, News 9 Plus. Israel has vowed to respond to the missile attack that Iran launched late on Tuesday. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has warned Tehran that it had made a big mistake. Now, Iran has said that any such retaliation will be met with an even tougher backlash. Now, these threats of retaliation against one another have pushed long-standing concerns over escalation towards a regional war in West Asia. Israel has just attacked a Russian airbase in Syria. It's continuing its attacks in Lebanon. Now, Israel and Iran have been engaged in a year-long shadow war, attacking each other's assets without admitting responsibility. However, these attacks have increased during the current war in Gaza, sparked by the Palestinian group Hamas's murderous rampage on Israeli civilians on the 7th of October last year. On another level, the Iran-Israel conflict is one of the world's most bizarre conflicts. Iran is over a thousand kilometers away from Israel. They have no land borders and no land disputes. Their closest point is more than 900 kilometers apart. Now that's roughly the distance between New Delhi and Gujarat. And if one looks at a map of comparison between the two countries, Iran is 1.6 million square kilometers. It's bigger than the Indian states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra put together. And Israel, on the other hand, is a country the size of the Indian state of Manipur. But size doesn't matter here because Israel has one of the world's strongest militaries. The Israeli Prime Minister just said that his military can reach any part of Iran. And that's what's adding to the anxiety of a larger regional war. If Israel were to strike at Iran, how would it go about it? We look at the scenarios that will play out in the next couple of days. If Israel responds to further such attacks, what will Iran then do? And Israel is determined to take on all its enemies at once in Lebanon, in Gaza, in Yemen and Syria. Can it do this? Joining me to discuss this today are Lieutenant General Sanjay Kulkarni, former DG Infantry, Dr. Zakir Hussain, a Middle East expert, and my colleague Aditya Raj call in the studio with me. Aditya, start by setting this up for us. What are your sources from Israel telling you, right? What's the mood in Israel right now just after this unprecedented ballistic missile attack by Iran on Tuesday? Well, the mood is uh, firstly, of course, uh, uh, determined that there needs to be an action, there needs to be uh, revenge. Uh, because yes, uh, Israel had gone after terror actors. Yes. It had gone after Ismail Haniyeh. Yes. It had gone after Nasrallah. It had gone after Fuad Shukur and right. several others. Surgical strikes Surgical against strikes, leaders. Very, very precision Terrorist strikes. leaders. Yeah. So why did Iran directly engage in a confrontation yes. with Israel? That is the entire question. And uh, US, UK, Europe and several other countries have come and said that we completely support and defend the right of Israel to respond right. and that too proportionately. Yes. You know, uh, one of the nuclear facilities of uh, Israel also came under attack during yes. this entire missile. Thankfully, there was no major casualties. Right. Thankfully, there was not major destruction. Yes. But now we expect and a war cabinet meeting has just concluded few hours ago, yes. which has made a pledge that there will be a decisive and a very strong reaction to whatever has happened. In right. fact, you know, what is Israel now doing is that it again is going specifically after characters yes. who've been involved in leading or uh, in some kind of a supply chain right. uh, of Hezbollah, Hamas and other actors. Yes. Only this night, you know, a few hours ago, yes. Aziz Laha, yeah. you know, has been killed. Now, this Aziz Laha mm -hmm. is this famous photograph from 2000 during the Second Intifada yes. when two Israeli soldiers in Ramallah yes. were killed after being abducted and not just killed, they were lynched. Yes. And there was this famous photograph of Aziz Laha holding his two hands with blood right. of both these soldiers along it. So, Israel is choosing these characters in right. Gaza, in uh, you know Lebanon and other areas uh, before they can actually take revenge. But now, a very important uh, surgical strike, I would say, or uh, a limited strike has also yes. begun on ground. Right. But we are told that heavy casualties have also happened. 
as right. of now israel has admitted that eight soldiers right. have been killed and close to 40 are injured right now but the casualties could increase because in one of the villages yes. which was predominantly you know covered very well by the idf the idf thought that we could enter very nicely and you know put our, put our operations in place right. but uh, there was a trap right. and the elite commando unit of israel war got trapped and eight soldiers uh, uh, got killed in that. so of, uh, but i soldiers. do not see that you know there is a lot of speculation about when this attack will happen of course right. israel is certainly going to attack we'll have to see whether these will be iranian nuclear facilities right. or other you know infrastructure and we'll come to that uh, later in the yeah. show aditya but thanks for setting this up for us and in fact my colleague uh, sumit choudhury from TV9 Bharatvarsh joins us live from the ground in Lebanon. He's in fact the first Indian reporter on the ground in Lebanon, which is under increasing attack. Sumit, uh, welcome to the News9 Plus show. Tell us what the situation is like right now in southern Lebanon, where you're standing. Well, the, the situation is not that uh, good, uh, especially because last month also I've, I've traveled to South Lebanon, especially to all those areas in the Be Beka Valley, in the, into the Golan yes. Heights. But now the situation has uh, drastically changed from last one month. Right now the situation is nobody is feeling safe in Beirut itself. I have right. traveled early morning to be to the one of the most prominent or the epicenter of Hezbollah, that is the Dahiya area. Yes. And that area is almost like a ghost town which I have, which I have noticed in the South Lebanon last month. Sumit, uh, Daiya so is the, the suburb where Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah was when that yes, building, yes. Uh, the bunker was demolished. Is that the same place? Well, Sandeep, definitely the same place. I have, I have traveled to all those areas, especially to the areas which is traveled, uh, which, which, which have been have been attacked very recently by the by the Israeli air force and when I, when I reached to that area I have been told that uh, evacuate this area as soon as possible because Israel is going to target this area yes. immediately in, in some time so the situation is very tense uh, last month which I uh, which I which I faced that people have been feeling a, a comfort zone especially in the yes. into the areas of Beirut but now the situation is drastically changed now the people have a fear that now the Israel is going to target the main uh, areas of Beirut but, uh, but 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 as my colleague Aditya has been explaining the the, yes. the situation in the, in the in the South Lebanon, the situation is changed in South Lebanon as well. Although yes, the Israeli uh, forces have ground forces have moved to the South Lebanon right. area, but they are stepping very carefully. They are stepping yes. to all these areas very carefully. They don't want to rush into all those areas because we have seen the casualties on the Israeli side also. Right. In 2006, when the Israeli forces entered to all these areas, they have faced a major casualties. Yes. They, they, their armor, their artillery vehicles have been captured by the Hezbollahs. So that is the main uh, concern for the Israeli forces still in, uh, in 2024. They wanted to enter, but they need, they, they want that the casualty should not be that much high, which is, yes. which is, which is in the, which is, which is, which was in 2006. So yes. they, 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 they have been stepping very carefully, but yes, Israel is now a, 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 a fully focused that they they wanted to neutralize, they wanted to, uh, you can uh, destroy Hezbollah, yes. not only into the South Lebanon, but also into the Dai and other, uh, uh, the main particular areas nearby to the Beirut as well. Sandeep. Right. Uh, Sumit, uh, thanks for uh, giving us that perspective from the ground there. So this, what uh, this confirms for us is the fact that Israel is going ahead with the planned ground assault into southern Lebanon. It's not holding back while it's targeting Iran on another front. Well, uh, right now, the, their main focus is not only because we have seen after 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 eliminating Nasrallah, their main target will be the all those commander who will be the next uh, command, uh, commander yes. of the of the Hezbollah. So they have been targeting pinpoint location, not only uh, not only into the Daya, but also to the to the major uh, nearby areas of Beirut. So they are in Harith. To, uh, yes. Today morning, they have targeted the Herat area where uh, they have they, uh, they got an information that one of the commanders is doing a meeting. So they target that particular building, right. and most probably they, 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 the 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 strategy behind all these attacks. They wanted to uh, target the commander control center. They wanted to target the the commanders, local commanders who have been charged, who have been the the, uh, the main commanders of uh, Hezbollah. So their strategy is very clear. They wanted to neutralize as much as possible so that the when the ground forces move yes. deep inside to the South Lebanon, that particular time there is no point of retaliation from the Hezbollah side. Yes. So their strategy is very clear. So they wanted to then neutralize all the aggression or the retaliation 
which comes from the Hezbollah, then only the ground forces will move Absolutely. to the south, uh, to uh, the yes. other uh, parts of the South Lebanon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sumit, for giving us that uh, ground perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, our wishes are with you. Uh, take care of yourself, my friend. Stay safe and thank keep you, bringing you, us you. updates from the battle zone in uh, Lebanon. Uh, General Kulkarni, it's, uh, you know, every day marks a new escalation in the crisis in West Asia. You're looking at new red lines crossed. Uh, you know, first it was that Iran has never directly attacked the territory of Israel. That line was crossed in April. In, on Tuesday, they attacked with 180 ballistic missiles, another red line that's crossed. How do you think Israel is going to retaliate? As it seems very clearly, Aditya was just telling us that the Israeli war cabinet has vowed to retaliate. How will this retaliation play out? Will it be an attack on Iran's energy infrastructure? Will it be an attack on nuclear facilities? Or will they just confine it to IRGC assets, IRGC bases and infrastructure? Uh, thank you, Sandeep. Uh, at the very outset, I would say, if, if Israel does not want to escalate. At, and at the same time, Israel wants to take revenge. It will be so much better that Israel does nothing at the moment with Iran. It leaves right. Iran to itself, to whatever Iran has done, and leave it to uncertainty. Because that uncertainty is what is going to keep Iran on tenterhook. Right. right now, Israel should focus on getting up to the Litany River. That yes. is the most important thing. Because Gaza is something which is now right under their control. They will right. not take very long to now uh, sort of, uh, you know, completely take control of uh, Gaza. But as regards the southern Lebanon is concerned, because uh, from north Israel, over 70 odd thousand people have uh, been displaced. They need to get back. And because otherwise, a small uh, country like Israel with a population of just uh, less than a crore, yes. and, uh, you know, uh, it does show that it, the 80 to 90,000 people are internally displaced. Well, it is absolutely evident that things are not normal in Israel, and that might just be a, a cause of concern even for the Israel. So, best is first and foremost how to get into southern Lebanon. In southern Lebanon, per se, even if we go back to that resolution 1701 of UN, it was Lebanese army and a contingent of 50 countries uh, to monitor that entire area between the Litany River and the Blue Line. Now, at the, between the Blue Line and the Litany River, the Lebanese army, over a period of time, have got replaced with Hezbollah. And this particular uniform, right. which is over there, unable to monitor anything. Notwithstanding, Israel may be having a tremendous amount of information, yes. intelligence, whatsoever it may, but despite that, they've suffered casualties. So yes. Israel must not take it easy that they seem to have complete control, they can hit anywhere and everywhere. Yes. It's perfectly fine to say so. But to be able to understand the fact that it is an ideological war, yes. at the same time, strength also is being shown. A military might and an ideological war, right. and one country throwing its military might, the other one using terrorism as an instrument to you know, prove its ideology is better than yes. the other one. It's an ideological war, yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And yes, yes, please continue, General. And okay. therefore, I would put Sandeep that, you know, until and unless that buffer zone, which Israel pulled back in the yes. year of 2000, and 2006 gave a feeling to Hezbollah that they've been able to push the Israelis south of the blue line. That right. shouldn't be so. I think Israel should occupy that 1,000 square kilometers, which allows it to be a buffer, and just a question of 27 kilometers. Eh? And, and the uh, most is 27 in the central, and about yes. 6 short kilometers to the eastern side. And once they are onto the Litany River, I think that would give uh, enough message yes. to Hezbollah that stay away, don't do it, right. and at the same time, they get get to that little land of a thousand square kilometers as a buffer. Yes. In Gaza also, they will continue to and subsequently be able to control right. that buffer zone right. with the help of UNIFIL. So Absolutely. Lebanese yes. army or Hezbollah substituted by Israel and UNIFIL to monitor the southern uh, Lebanon right. and Gaza also to have a UN force. So right. you have a Gaza UN force, you have there also UN force and the Israelis. So therefore the Israelis feel secure and at the same time Iran which is the mastermind of yes. Hamas, Hezbollah and Houthi, then yeah. would get a clear message that it is much better not to use terrorism and to be a normal state and not a radicalized state. Absolutely. And Houthi needs to be sorted out nice and proper by an international body because USA and UK have already started tackling the Houthis. 
There is yes. no way that international uh, sea lanes of communication must be obstructed by anybody and yes. definitely not uh, uh, to, to the terrorist yes. organization. Thank you. Thank you, General yeah. Kulkarni. Yeah. Uh, so, Israel uh, would primarily like to focus on southern Lebanon and not uh, expend its uh, anger on uh, attacking Israel. That's what uh, Iran, my mistake, uh, that's what you're saying. And they would focus on creating a buffer zone that would protect uh, Israeli civilians. But I want to ask Dr. Zakir Hussain this, who's been listening to this discussion very patiently. Dr. Hussain, Israel wants revenge for that attack on Tuesday. It says it is going to strike. Uh, War cabinet has approved it. Do you see a major Israeli attack on Iran coming of a like that we haven't seen before? The previous attack in response to the April attack by Iran was a smaller attack. It was a more precise surgical strike for which they never took credit. How will it be different this time around? You think the pressure on Israel is that much more to respond? And if there is a response, will there be an all-out war between Iran and Israel? What I feel that... Uh... We have started this debate with the presumed presumption that uh, Iran is a terrorist and a radical state. So debate is not uh, in that uh, light. We have to understand why Israel has not killed Hania in Qatar. No, no, we didn't say that uh, Iran, Iran is a no, terrorist. No, no. We said that they have been uh, propping up proxies. Why, why Israel up has not proxies. killed Hania? I am, my question is why Israel has not killed Hania in Qatar, where he was living for the last several years why he has not killed hania when he was in other states like syria and others right, Be right. because israel wanted to drag iran in the war and mm. it has been successful and it was very clear that if i go with iran against iran it cannot sustain america will jump into right. and that's why iran has done israel has done provoked iran to do this and israel iran has also right to defend and create these preemptive things which it has been doing. Uh, now coming to this time attack, certainly Netanyahu and Israel and US and the response coming from the Western countries, mm. including Australia, it means that response will be very heavy. Number right. one. Second, when it is going to happen? I feel that partially it will happen now and full-fledged may be after the U.S. election, that it may not impact upon the U.S. election because Kamala Harris and Biden yes. are saying that we are pro, uh, right. we, are, we have some moderate uh, stand, some moderate heart for Palestinians. So what is happening, going to happen this time? They will target, first of all, I feel that they, Israel, the, duster, the way Israel is targeting the leaders their first target may be uh, Atullah Khamnai. Right. Second, there are two nuclear centers, Natanz and Fardo. But it is also, uh, we should know that these two centers are in a mountainous area uh, beneath 1.5 kilometer. And that, was, that will be tough for America even to break that thing. Let us see what happens. Because right. America supplied the bunker cluster. Yes. Uh, to Israel to carry forward that one. Second, that oil installation may be targeted. And you also said that IRGC centers may be targeted. Yes. Pipeline, gas, oil pipeline, there are six major oil, oil pipelines that may be targeted. Iranian port may be targeted. And if Iranian port are targeted, then our Chabahar may be suffering from that. Right. And already our stakes in Haifa of Adani has been in doldrum and again if we go, war goes further yes that kenya recently uh, adani has taken a stake in kenyan port that may also be affected right what will the consequences be? what iran has iran said that if if such activities are taken against me i will stop oil supplies i will attack all the bases of america right and i will stop uh hormuz red sea and many more things like so, that. So this I is mean, exactly, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Yeah. Uh, Hussain, this is exactly the scenario that we are worried about. The fact that this yeah. could actually spiral out of control and become an all-out war engulfing the whole region and uh, affecting, bringing in 
external powers in United States, for instance, Aditya, that's a big, it's within the realm of possibility. Well, absolutely. You know, I quite agree with what uh, Dr. Uh, you know, Zakir said. I believe that immediately, you know, there will not be a response in haste. Right. There will be some limited strikes that will happen. Yes. You know, Israel will focus on southern Lebanon. They have uh, achieved a lot strategically right. in right. Gaza already. Mm. It is under their control. They will try to make limited strikes both through Navy, through Air Force and through a ground operation right. in southern Lebanon. And that we'll see over the next few weeks. Right. Finally, the ultimate aim, I believe, of Israel, which many are not speaking about, would be a regime change in Iran. Yes. Whether that will happen, how it will happen, mm. because even if you see uh, a lot of government uh, you know, spokespersons in Israel, even former Prime Minister Neftali Bennett yes. has very vociferously said that now is the time to have this regime change, which will not only benefit Israel, but larger Middle East peace process, and also uh, United States, Europe, and others who have been yes. engaged uh, with Israel and supporting them. Finally, you know, to believe that Iran has been dragged into uh, this kind of a conflict would be, uh, you know, a very myopic thinking because Iran is propping up these proxies. Yes. You know, if Hezbollah, uh, you know, Houthis and now Hamas are continuously going to Tehran and meeting Khamenei, IRGC leaders yes. and etc. Of course, Iran is directly involved in this entire conflict. And Iran is not only propping up these characters, Iran also wants to decimate Jews and Israel completely. Yes. So how can one say that, you know, there should have been an attack in Qatar and other places? Right. So I uh, perfectly believe that Israel is in no mood uh, to let it go or have some kind of a deal or a ceasefire at right. this particular stage. Absolutely. I think that too would be a myopic thinking. Israel is not going to succumb under pressure of United States anymore. Right. It has calculated its risks uh, and what are the casualties that will happen. But it will continue this long war perhaps next six months yes. until there's a new reality, not just in Gaza, but all across its borders. A war of attrition indeed, Aditya. I mean, this sounds very ominous. A long war lasting for another few months. Uh, a war of attrition that could possibly drag Iran into the conflict as it has already done so and possibly expand, bringing in other uh, major world powers. And that is exactly the scenario that we've been warning about. An all-out war between Iran and Israel. It's not good for anyone. But that seems to be the road that a lot of the countries involved in this conflict seem to be taking. But thank you very much, uh, General Sanjay Kulkarni, Dr. Zakir Hussain, and my colleague Aditya Raj call for joining us this evening to talk about the possibility, the specter rather, of an all-out war in West Asia.